there are some things in Python that I learned extremely late. And one of them was the difference between a static method, an instance method, and a class method. I just didn't run into them that often to be able to understand the difference. And one of the most common places you'll find, for example, a static method is when you're typing some random method inside your class and it gives you this squiggly line that you want to go away. And that's going to tell you that method add numbers may be static. And when you click on that button, it ruins your code and takes that method outside of your class. And you don't even know why it does that. But anyway, this video is going to teach you the difference between an instance method, a class method, and a static method so that you can use those comfortably in Python when the time comes. Now we're going to do this all from scratch so you'll get a maximum understanding of this concept. And we're going to use two modules for this that aren't related to actually creating a class or an instance, but we do need them to make my code feel more at home. So here we'll type in from typing import self. And this is new in Python 3.11. You don't need it, but I'm going to use it. And from date time, we're going to import date time or just date actually. Now first, let's talk about instance methods and static methods. And to do that, we will create this calculator. So calculator, and we'll create an initializer. And this initializer is going to take a version number. So version, and all we're going to do is initialize the instance variable with that version number. Then we will create an instance method. So here we'll type in def description. And all this is going to do is print a description of the current calculator and its number. So we will print the following text, which I will copy and paste because today is a lazy day. So we'll paste that inside there that we are currently running the calculator on version self.version, which is the version that we initialize this calculator with. And this is considered an instance method because we are referring to self, which refers to this instance over here, which means if we create a new instance from this calculator, we're going to be able to use that version from the instance, not from the class. And to demonstrate that, we can create two calculators. We can say calc one is going to equal a calculator with the version of 10. And we'll duplicate that, say calculator two, will have a version of 200. Now I will wrap this in if name is equal to main, and we're going to print the description of each one of these. So calculator one has its description and calculator two also has its description. And if we run this now, we will get the descriptions back from those instance methods. As you can see, each instance had its own local instance variable. So we were able to retrieve those by using the self keyword. And we're all familiar with how instance methods work because we can directly modify this instance thanks to the self keyword. So where do static methods slip in? And I will show you right now by creating a new function. And this function here is going to be called add numbers. And what we want to get is an undefined amount of arguments. So the user can enter as many numbers as they please of type float, and we will return to them the sum of these numbers. So it's a very simple function that does what we want it to do, but it gives us this crazy squiggly line. And it says that method add numbers may be static. And as I demonstrated earlier, if you click on that quick fix, it's just going to do what it wants. It's going to put it somewhere that you don't want it to be, or maybe you do want it to be there, but I doubt it. So to explain what a static method is, a static method is just a method that can be used anywhere that doesn't rely on the class. So add numbers can effectively be outside of this class and it won't affect anything because we do not use the instance inside this function. And we can even remove that and it will be perfectly fine. And this will just be part of the class as a static method. But usually it's nice to annotate it as static method just to inform others that this is static and that it is a choice you made to keep it inside this class. Because again, this can be placed anywhere inside your program and it won't affect the class and it will still run properly. But a general reason you'll keep a static method inside a class is because it pairs nicely with the class that you are working with. So maybe we want to add numbers and you can of course put that in any module you want, but maybe it's easier if we just use it here, we can say calculator dot add numbers and we do 10, 20, 30. And you'll notice here, we did not have to create an instance to use it. We were just able to use it 
as it was. And if we print that sum, we'll get 60 back. So we just added it to that class for organization. And really there's no general rule for this. It's up to you how you want to organize your code. You can put this in a different module if you want. You can make a math module for your code or you can combine it with some class that actually uses that functionality quite often. So it might pair nicely with that class as an addition, just as I did down here with numbers. We can use it anywhere that we have the calculator without having to create an instance from that class. So I'm afraid I can't give you any more tips regarding where to use a static method. It's really a personal preference, whether you want this method to be paired with your class or inside its own module, that's up to you. And that's the tool that Python provided to us to make it explicit that we want this to be inside the class. So now we have a good understanding on the difference between instance methods and static methods. All we have left are class methods. So to achieve that example, let's delete everything but the imports. And I'm just going to paste in this class and explain it real quick. Right here, we have a person with an initializer that takes a name and an age. And then we initialize these variables inside our instance so that we can use them later in this description, for example. Now we know we can create a method that affects the instance. And we know we can create a method that doesn't affect the instance nor the class. So we only have one remaining option inside here to edit the class and that is using a class method. So here we can type in at class method and we'll type age from year. And you'll notice something funky here that we have CLS instead of self. And that's because we are now editing the class directly. We're not referring to the instance anymore. Any changes we do to this class will affect the class, the actual class. And it's also important to mention that self and CLS are just naming conventions. This can be anything you want. You can say hello if you want, and that will refer to the class. But as you can see, the editor tries to tell us usually first parameter of such methods is named CLS. And that's a naming convention I would follow. So I would keep it as CLS if you're planning on having other people look at your code at any foreseeable point in the future. But here we have CLS. And what we're going to do inside here is create a factory or an alternative constructor for our person class, because right now we can pass in a name and an age, but maybe we have someone who wants to pass in a birth year instead of just passing in the age. And that can be much easier done if we just pass in the birth year using an alternative constructor or this factory. So here we need to still create the constructor name of type string, but this time we can tell the user that they can create a person by providing a birth year. And that should be of type integer. And it's going to return to us self, which is the class itself. Now inside we can type in that the current year of type integer is equal to date dot today dot year. And we're going to get the age by typing age of type integer is equal to the current year minus the birth year that we've provided. So make sure you provide a valid birth year or this is going to be a bit funky. Now what we can do is return that class. So we can type in return CLS and we're going to pass everything into the constructor. So here we can type in the name and the age which we provided as a birth year. Now let's see how we can use this by creating our if name is equal to main check scrolling down a bit and I'm going to create a person, which is myself. So I'm a person and we're going to get the age from the year. So here we'll type in my name first as Federico and we will pass in my birth year, which is 1997. And we're just going to print my description. So me dot description. And if we run this, we'll get that I'm 25 years old. And that was thanks to creating this alternative constructor or this factory. We still created an instance of a class, but this time we did it using a class method. So to keep it short and simple, a class method is going to affect the actual class while an instance method is going to affect the instance, meaning that we can refer to self and the variables inside the instance. And a static method might or might not be related to the class. It can be used outside or inside, and it doesn't have anything to rely on from the class itself. So that just about covers everything you need to know about instance methods, class methods, and static methods. Of course, if I forgot something, do feel free to leave that in the comment section down below so others can learn a bit more about what I missed. 
But otherwise, with that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.